Hey. Pedro. Long time no, no talk. Been a while. Hello, hello. Hey. Um, uh, let's uh, let's give it a minute or two. I uh, just need to complete the agenda, which I'm doing last minute today, unfortunately. Uh, I should have done this earlier, but uh, we can give a minute or two if somebody's going to arrive. And also, I'm going to turn off this meeting analytics. Uh, All right, let's get started. Um, share my screen. There we go. Well, let's start with our uh, welcome to um, as it's, uh, May May fourth, two thousand twenty-three. Our is six community call, and this is our hyperledger antitrust policy notice. And we can get started with our agenda.
so yeah um starting with the uh, good first issues update uh which there is a closed captioning oh right um so starting with the good first issues um which uh, have a quite a quite a traction uh within our, our repo uh we have a number of uh, good first issues uh created by uh, george and um uh, and Bogdan. So this one, this is something we already discussed last week. And uh, a tech bash has uh, picked up the one with the uh, base wallet. And then we have a number of others uh, created recently by Bogdan. Um, so anybody's willing to uh, learn something and contribute, there's a, there's a work. The, the second one is already picked up, I think. Um, ah, there's a PR for that. Yeah, by um ah right. We the, should, this uh, uh, we swap the R guy. Possible. Mm. Swap. I don't uh, really understand how these work. Um, I was uh, able to assign swap to uh, the other guy last time, uh, Tech Bench, but uh, I can't find swap to here. So I'm not sure what the difference is between them. But um, okay, so this one is picked up. So there's three more left. Um, next up, uh, the mentorship uh, program status. Um, similar like last week, uh, we are still in the stage of applications uh, until all the way until 15th of May. So you can still submit applications if you would like to become mentee in in our mentorship program under Linux Foundation. And we can move to our review. Um, so uh, there was uh, a small fix, uh, which is fixing issue for uh, writing on a ledger. So this is concerns uh, issuers or uh, pretty much issuers, uh, not even verifiers, uh, and definitely not the mobile use cases. Uh, this was uh, a bug introduced in 0.55.0 release, and this is fixed now. Uh, next up, we had uh, two good first issues from uh, first-time contributors emerged. Uh, one was a swapter, and other one from Tech Bash. So props to you guys. Thank you for PRs. Um, uh, we had some, uh, this is somewhat uh, in progress, but it's ready to be merged, it is from me. Uh, so there was uh, some cleanups regarding to the leftovers from FFIs. Uh, George, I'm sure you're familiar with this stuff and we're happy to see this to be gone. Yeah, so we had this, nice. <laughs> these tricks here um, to, to keep this passing, we had to introduce this ugliness. And now that's gone. So have a look at this PR. It's fairly simple. Uh, just gets rid of the ugly, ugly pieces. No, was there a trick to get it to still pass, or was it just not needed anymore? Yeah, it was um, like uh, I couldn't just remove it with no changes. So actually, to get test passing, I had to do some some minor modification. I think in one place. Mm -hmm. uh where was it i'm sure Best. Mm. where was it where was it yeah i'm not sure exactly uh what I, uh, but it's 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 contained somewhere here uh but it was yeah it was it was uh it was after i removed it i think only one test started to fail in node.js wrapper or something like that so it was really just some edge case uh, which which this was holding up uh yeah and uh lastly um and uh, probably most significantly from here uh from this uh from for last week the the DID resolver and parser 
has been like uh, pretty thoroughly uh, reviewed and addressed by Miro. Uh, perhaps if you would like to, and if you have time, uh, George, feel free to have a look and uh, leave some review yourself. But from from my, my myself and uh, and uh, Bogdan, I believe. Um, yep. We kind of went through it. So. Yeah, yeah. Don't let me hold it up. I'll, I'll try to look, but yeah. Okay. W would you like to? Would you like to take a look, or do you think we can just go ahead and merge it? Uh, I'll just go ahead. I think I've been somewhat following the threads, and it seemed very active. Hundred and fifty-seven messages in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I think it was one of the most uh, most discussed PR ever. Yeah. So. Seems like you guys have been pretty thorough with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess uh, after after Mira uh, finishes addressing all the points we'll have there, there's not much left. Uh, then we'll um, go ahead and merge it. Might be even today. All right. And so we have lots of good stuff in progress. Uh, so where do we even begin? Uh, I'll start with the easy stuff. So um, this PR is ready for myself, uh, just is missing approve button from someone. Uh, it's just preventing uh, attempts to publish a LV6 image when the CI is, when the PR is coming from the fork uh, and it was always making the this fork PRs to fail. So intentionally I pushed this PR from the fork itself and it passed with this modification here. So um, you guys can go ahead and merge it. Um, next up, um, yeah, we have uh, you know, the V6 iOS, iOS uh, CI refactoring. So Bogdan, you want to say a word or two here? Yeah, so basically the aim is um, to kind of speed them up. Um, because there are a lot of architectures that are not needed and get compiled, especially for the underlying uh, libraries that are being used, like um, the libsodium and zero MQ and even OpenSSL. So it's pretty much it. And additionally, um, kind of simplifying the whole thing by vendoring the build scripts for those two libraries, libsodium and zero MQ, rather than depending on the Ruby scripts that everything created. Uh, not because there was anything wrong with them, it's just that I guess their use cases were different and, and um, the way those static libs got packaged after the script was done and then we would unpack them and all that stuff, it can basically just get simplified a lot. Um, right now it's um, kind of stale, I'll have to continue uh, next week uh, with this for technical reasons, but uh, it's pretty much done. It's just um, it just needs a couple of rounds of testing, and I can only do that properly on my local machine, like on a local VM running Mac OS. Because um, hmm. in the CI, it just takes forever to get one run going, and then some errors throws up, and you got to restart. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's like forever. one hour of real time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You make one small change yeah. and wait an hour to see the result. It's annoying. Yeah. Also notably, uh, we are also removing uh, this like uh, entire uh, legacy iOS legacy version of the wrapper, which was right. like uh, it's basically these two things are essentially the same thing, but the legacy was missing some refactoring, which was done by um, a contributor. I don't remember exactly who, maybe Pomfar or Paul Ro Paul Robs, uh, in the, back in December. And we kind of wanted to keep the old version running for a while. Um, but now we are removing the, the old pre-refactoring version. So that's going to be gone. Right. And lots of removal, uh, code removal. Hey, um, out of curiosity, what is the final build artifact for uh, the iOS wrapper? Is it a framework or is it like a .a? It's a framework. framework. It's a framework, yeah. Okay, cool. A, a normal framework or an XC framework? Uh, let's see what we are publishing here. It's um, oh, we're publishing zips. Well, that I here. didn't know. 
uh, what? both for what? device and we we published two versions one is only device build the one other one includes like should be possible to run in a simulator and uh cool uh, can, we can take a look what's in there do you know if um if we're compiling for uh arm or m1 simulators now mm, uh, there are no there are no mac os builds no Oh, I mean, like, um, so I assume this or, or, framework has uh, both an x86 simulator and uh, iPhone. Yeah. But there's also ARM simulators for oh, I think you're right. computers. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if the the libraries do get compiled for that. Because mm. essentially, like, even the Evernim Ruby scripts, they would just essentially use some other build scripts built by some people that essentially tweak them around to pick the, the build uh, around so that they would get compiled for iOS, watchOS, and I don't know, uh, tvOS, I guess, like all, all these, uh, all that Apple ecosystem. But I don't know if there's anything regarding M1s. Um, right, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, all, all good. Uh, uh, if it's I of any interest, I... leave, a, leave a note. Yeah, I'll leave a note on the PR. I can have a look at, at it next week. Maybe not add it initially, but at least just kind of uh, scout around and see whether it, it's possible. Um, yeah, I, I'm bringing it up because I've gone pretty far down this rabbit hole before with um, building mm -hmm. Rust for iOS. And the problem with dot .frameworks uh, is frameworks are meant to represent a single a build for a single architecture um but mm -hmm. people have found ways to um basically create a, a fat dot a file that contains architectures right. for x86 simulator and iphone um mm -hmm. but you're not meant to do it like that you're meant to have a framework and a dot a for each architecture um so with the framework approach i don't think there is a way to have a universal binary that has uh x86 simulator uh, m1 simulator and iphone all in one i think for that you need an xc framework and anyway it, it's a bit of a headache i think what we have is fine <laughs> yeah we, we just have the dot framework uh, as far as i see and we do split the static lips into individual architectures and essentially the ruby scripts by every name would would make a fat library in like a multi-arch library and then we would split it so basically that's another thing why we're vendoring these so that we can remove that part and just uh, when we build the um the libraries we build them one architecture at a time use them build the vcx build the framework and then you know keep going like that um yeah yeah but cool. um yeah, again, I'm 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 by no means an expert in this in this field, so uh, feel free to have a look and let me know if something seems uh, like a, it could use an improvement. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm not an expert. It confuses the hell out of me. <laughs> the the only reason I started doing this was because of the um, um, the issue that occurred with um, the, the the compilation the compilation issue where the yeah. But, Basically, the, the zero MQ compilation issue that started occurring when the Rust compiler got uh, the version of the Rust compiler got bumped as a result of the message scrape wow. getting integrated, and like the CI would run for a long time, and the whole troubleshooting was a pain. And I figured that you know what, what if we sped this up a bit because it would benefit all of us um, and all future PRs. So that's uh, that's it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's great. Awesome. Also, just for information's sake, um, building for mm. and x86 simulators uh, and iPhone isn't really a problem because uh, you can still open up, if you're on M1, you can still open up Xcode in Rosetta and it, it still runs everything fine in x86 simulator okay. mode. Mm. So it's not mm. much of an issue. Okay. So it's not uh, some sort of version thing or uh, 
no, that, no, that no, important. No. That yeah, it's just a little detail cool. that you got to remember to open Xcode and x86 if you're using a simulator. Right. All right, let's go on the on the next item. So we covered the iOS refactor, the fork, and then we have the bigger stuff. So uh, this is something freshly cooking right now. Uh, again, Bogdan, you can leave a few comments here, or maybe you can share a screen and uh, kind of go through your POC. Yeah, I'd actually love to talk about this. So uh, let's. Uh... Let me just put some stuff here and share my screen. And let me know if you see something. Anything? Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Do you, do you mind okay, zooming cool. in a little? Sorry. Yeah, sure. If I, uh... yeah, I think uh, I, I think you have plugged in monitor. Maybe it'll be better if you unplug it so that okay. the screen Hold can on. be so. Yeah, just a sec. I'm just going to switch the screens then. Yeah, it's a nice ultra wide monitor, looks like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, cool, that's great. All right. So let's actually start with the ledger. Um, yeah, so basically uh, I was thinking about looking at all the all these portraits for ledger and anagrams and the wallet. And Kind of thinking of how we can make them better um, with the initial effort coming from my idea of kind of um, removing that profile wrapper, which seems kind of honestly, it's it's a bit annoying to work with because you carry all this stuff around with you, <clears throat> and they're not really needed all the time. And we basically um, had a lot of talks about um, this. This, these things and kind of realized that, that um, we could split these into some multiple parts, um, which would make more sense. So for instance, if we take the ledger trait or the base ledger, as it was called before, um, there are a lot of, like when you want to do an implementation, a lot of, a lot of customer code or, or, or yeah, customer code or agent implementations would only be interested in ever just reading from the ledger, not writing. And basically a, a type of implementing just the read operations would be much simpler and slimmer. Whereas if you do need to write on the ledger and you need the additional details to come with that, then okay, there's no problem, but um, you, you can basically add that as an, as an extension rather than having it implicit and requiring all the information just to do a read on the ledger. Um, so yeah, essentially the idea would be splitting those um, into based on this um, type of operation. And then um, given the, the issues that you created about having stronger types or know, better defined types for the essentially the arguments and the return values used in the traits. Um, my idea is basically to just use some associated types. And when you implement and do an implementation of a trait, you can basically just, okay, define exactly what type you want to use. Let's say you do a indie ledger and you implement ledger read on it. So you have for the type schema, some indie schema or for cred dev, some indie cred dev and so on. And you can use these associated types as return types and arguments and so on. And having a, like dependencies between traits or trait implementations like that would mean that, for instance, it, it seems sensible to say that if you want to implement ledger write, then you should be able to read from the ledger. So you should, your type should be implemented from the ledger. As a result, you can use the uh, 
associated types for modulo here as well. And even the anode threads one. Um, now, another idea that Patrick really just had, I just drafted this like uh, I don't know, 10 minutes before the meeting, but um, we could essentially split the anode thread straight into roles or role based operations. So you could have just the verifier with its methods <clears throat> and um, the prover and the issuer. I don't know if there's anything for folder. Um, and those are like, again, like really, really basic, quickly drafted, um, some quickly drafted code. So don't take it with a grain of salt, but it's just about relating, relating the idea. And so for instance, you, if you have implement the nanocreds verifier, you want to implement it for a specific type of ledger. So that would mean of your ledger would essentially at least implement ledger read, right? Depending on, maybe it doesn't make sense here. Maybe it needs ledger write, I don't know. Um, and then you can use these same associated types and propagate them further on. So if you have an indie implementation of random creds, you would be obviously using the indie ledger, which you pass as an associated type. And that's pretty much the, the idea um, and it's kind of the same for wallet. Um, I don't know if it makes um, that much sense here right now, but essentially just having some associated types. So this way we can make them, um, you know, ledger agnostic and implementation agnostic. So um, similar to what you use for credx, right? You wouldn't even need to deal with the other, uh, the other roles here and the indie stuff uh, to I don't know, even try to emulate that or just mock it or anything or throw errors because splitting things like this would mean, okay, you implemented the credit stuff, but only for, you know, for prover and, and that's it. So the ledger type would also go here, of course. Uh, again, this was quickly drafted. I don't know if there's anything else that would be added, but that's pretty much the idea. It's a very basic concept. Yeah, and um, that's that's pretty much it. This would overall allow us to kind of use well-defined or at least better defined types for what we mean in all these implementations. That's that's really cool. Nice. I think I think splitting the traits by um, roles is definitely the right thing to do because um, it is pretty mm -hmm. ugly how credx and non credx is has like unimplemented methods for like half the stuff. Um, same with ledger uh, using indie video. Right. Um, right, and this was Patrick's idea, and he's right. Um, I guess it makes sense from consumer a consumer code perspective too because if you want to do your own implementation and if you only want to implement part of the protocol like your agent is only going to be a approver then that's fine you don't need to mock the the rest of the trade or implement or throw errors or implement some mocking or just done stuff or whatever or even do like proper implementations you can just choose the the minimum of what you want to do and just stick with that so um yeah also oh, sorry. So, yeah go, go, on, go on go on oh i was gonna say um one part that's confusing me a bit um let, let's say you were to implement a non-creds prover uh in mm -hmm. you know, using credx as the implementation base um right you have to marry that implementation to a specific ledger read instance yeah yeah you would would that be a problem yeah i'm not sure i mean not it's not it's not an instance it's like a type so it's not um it's not like one if you have two credex ledgers of the same type you can use any of them i i think i mean uh like uh i understand and uh, you know the, the, the associated types you like for pitching for the ledger but uh, then like uh yes yeah, basically you you, yeah, you will end up with like two instances of like um 
this uh, two instances, each implementing like read for different ledger, right? Returning like mm -hmm. different types. So I feel like, right. uh, I mean, it's, um, I think it's a matter of maturity of the Anon create specification, like, and like, but, but I feel like uh, regardless of the ledger, in the end, you should end up like with same, some some shared structure like on the credit schema it, it should be it should be pretty well, yes so, i agree so, and, and then, and but then, it's not right now uh it, well yeah and and then if, if you could right then then uh this for example unknown credits verifier wouldn't know about any kind of ledger differences it would just take that like uh schema yeah because if you uh, if you had Right, so if you had like a well-defined schema that absolutely any implementation would return and use, then you wouldn't even need the associated type. You would just use that because it's well-defined, mm. it's one structure and you don't need that. But given that everybody's pretty much just uh, tweaking stuff around to their own use cases and needs, then you cannot really rely on a common implementation. So the easiest, way to kind of accommodate that kind of stuff is pretty much having some uh, you know some type balance like this i don't know it's just that I, I like right agree. now uh, like right now yeah. the 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 associated type doesn't present any advantage because we don't have any other implementations and at the moment where we'll actually start adding some like additional ledger let's say uh i saw that there's a the the um, there's a uh Anonymous schema for Cardano, for example. So, let's say you want to add uh, Cardano as a Anonymous registry for schema credential definitions, right. stuff like that. Then at that point, I believe like uh, it should be possible, you know, to find that shared baseline. I, I like the the, the specification for Anonymous would mature in such a way that we can have a a schema, define a schema structure which would fit both um the one from the one from uh you know resolved on cardano and the one resolved from indy right but i don't think we know that right now i, I as i said i completely agree the ideal uh, solution would be that all these things would like everybody would agree on a structure and specification of these uh, of these models, of these data models um, and these objects so that they would have a matching set of fields and data types and everything else. But it doesn't seem to be the case right now. But actually, I think, I mean, I think it should be already, or is it, or is it not? I'm not sure if we, we just- We did look yesterday, look. didn't we? Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at the spec right now again. I'm just wondering. Schema. Okay, there is some to do's in the spec. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, it won't hurt to use the associated types. Right now, there will be only basically one like uh, just the indie stuff i guess and maybe one version of it right the indie stuff so um, but i'm just questioning like if there's going to be only one right now and um isn't it is, isn't better to just like hard code for example these unknown creds you know uh, just hard code really. every, kind of the way it was with the uh, indie structures you know and then once we actually mm -hmm. have something mm -hmm. else to add then use the you know associated types to enable that if it's needed, if it's not possible to create the shared Not structure. really, no. Fine. Like if you make it this way from the get-go, then the types are already here. And let's say, let's say that these would all converge to the same, you know, same types definition at some point. So for Indy and Cardano and whatever else is gonna be out there, um, they will all have the same schema, the same fields, same credential definition, definition, and like the same specification for all these types. Then you can just use that one type in all of them 
you know, was a quick and dirty uh, way of getting all of them on the same page. And then you can like refactor and use the, uh, the actual single type in, in the, I don't know, the return, um, mm. yeah, the return, um, like return value and arguments and all that. But until then, you can have different types and without anything, uh, you know, conflicting like that. So that would be that would be easy to do right now, um, and like removing this would be easier, but adding it would be much harder. Hmm. Well, all right, and I'm not necessarily like strongly against. The, I I don't see. I personally don't see that much value in it right now, but uh, I don't mind to do it either. And it won't hurt. It's not like it's a, a lot of code or anything. Uh, yeah, and so all these... like the whole point was the whole point, I think, of this, hmm. and the whole idea behind it was to be agnostic over stuff in some way. It's not the ideal way, but it was some way. And hmm. when the ideal way appears, we can easily uh, get there. Right. Uh, so sorry just to confirm um an implementation of say a non-creds prover would mm -hmm. couple it with a specific instance implementation of ledger read it, that that'd be right right <laughs> yeah it's it's basically a type bound it's not an instance binding like right but uh, it, you'd, like you'd be coupling a non-creds prover uh, to say indie VDR ledger, for example, if you were right. Able. And the reason not that, even well, just, reason just careful, not, not even indie VDR, uh, like ledger, like uh, just indie itself, like uh, there'll be no difference. Uh, like the, the whether you use uh, like VDR tools or indie VDR for the ledger reads, you would still use the same indie type. But uh, if the you if you were to add like Hedera, for example, then yeah, I guess uh, that would shuffle the cards uh, a, a little bit. So the the idea of binding this is simply because we want to use these associated types, right? That's that's all that there is about. And I don't know if it's like if it sounds wrong to have like this verifier instance uh, kind of tied a bit to the ledger type but uh, there's really no other way other than just hard coding that if this is working with the in the ecosystem then it will accept the indie schema or indie credit or indie whatever and then you just ba basically have separate implementations regardless uh, uh, this basically just abstracts over that correct me if i'm wrong but i i believe like it this would actually require minimal implement like minimal changes in the consumer code isn't it mm, what, what do you mean like the the code right. which is for example calling verify you know verify proof there mm -hmm. wouldn't be needed changes because because assuming yeah ultimately say, the type in the consumer code the type will be the, will be the same so this will still yeah, be yeah, in exactly. the schema or whatever we use this is just yeah. a, an abstract type definition but um, it will be matching up so ultimately won't be yeah yeah so ultimately the, the types will remain the same in the consumer code right now it's more about preparing for you know for the future and for other implementations because the indie stuff is still like we use indie and we use indie types and these are basically going to match to that and they're going to match because we bind to them like this. yeah do you have any, uh, what, what do you think, George? Do you have any concern about this? Um, I, I'm just trying to think about what an implementation would look like. Um, yeah, say- it would, it would pretty much look like this. So, let's say, so Just, I don't know, isn't the field. And let's say we do. Okay. Oh, here. 
Okay. I mean, we do need a ledger too. So we do that. Um, I mean, there are all the methods in here, so. Yeah. All right, want to help me out? Okay, but yeah, so the types would be yeah. like, I don't know, type schema. So I don't have an, I don't know where it is exactly, but let's assume it's in the schema. Something like that. And yeah. we would do that from the types and then implement the methods. So everything returns the proper thing, right? And then in here, you basically do uh, ledger, do that. And like this will never even take an instance of a ledger itself. It's just about, uh, let me reuse the associated types that I define here, right? So, yes, but, um, um, uh, sorry, I don't mean instance, right but more so that now in the, in the indie example, it works fine because indies already all coupled together. But something like mm -hmm. credits, non creds, I don't know if that should necessarily be tied to a, a VDR ledger implementation and the types. So of, what would it be tied to? Like, what what ledger does that look at? Does it, does it look at? A, does it still use indie or anything? Oh. Like, what, what um, kind of ledger? Well, well, hmm. Or what? I don't know. Like, what's the difference conceptually, not at the type level or something like that? Um, so, when you're saying indie ledger and indie and non creds verifier, I, I assume you're meaning mm -hmm. like an indie SDK or a VDR tools implementation of ledger and non creds, respectively. Is that? sort of it can mean it can mean anything about yeah so let's say that traditionally okay i see what you mean let's say um, i don't know that this is basically in the vdr you can create the same type for credx and just use i know uh the, the newer indie stuff right the, the modular I, crates you know j just to make it i think uh, this can be like just a few small changes will reflect the final state bit closer Let's do, let's do like uh, one more impo. Let's do, now we have like impo ledger read uh, le for individual ledger. Let's do ledger read okay. for like, you know, VDR tools ledger. And the point is here that in both cases, you will essentially uh, share. Yeah, you use, yeah, you can share the same data, types right? here if you want. Yeah, no yeah. problem. And this can work somewhat differently than this and, no and then here yeah. the actual types here would likely be taken from the anon creds uh crate so let's not call right. it individual schema. let's call it like an anon creds colon colon schema for example yeah what? in the ledger read type okay um, the, um, the uh, type schema you know type schema equals Okay. And and, the, and let's call it like anon creds colon colon you know uh, schema. So they would they would right. come from uh, okay. the, the anon creds. Yeah, let's uh, say they create. come from that module, and this is yeah. from VDR tool. Like no, that. no, it would actually probably be the same thing. I think so these are the it's, same. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it's both like same ledger, right? It will have the same times for implementation okay. that's, that's, what, that's what i was confused about because i didn't really get what george was yeah, yeah. referring to so yeah and then here like let's say you want to you want to do the, the vdr tools on creds right so then you bind it to the vdr tools ledger type and it still uses the indie types because they're common but the implementation like the method implementations will be different if you want to refer to that and if it's needed um but let's say like i don't know maybe a couple of things are different but let's say that um i don't know the the vdr not the vdr tool but maybe this other thing has a, an optimized version of the credit definition so maybe this one is different 
I don't know. Like you can mix and match them however you want. It, it wouldn't be a problem in that regard. And this would apply like for each singular implementation. Right. Um, okay. I think I understand. Um, but yeah, it's still it's still tied. Like a non-creds is now tied to a ledger type. Um, I think that regardless of what you do, it will be tied to a ledger type because it uses ledger. Like it needs some some types that are defined in the ledger. Like even if you do the other way around and say that, I don't know, the, the ledger is tied to anon creds, to an anon creds type, it's still the same thing. Like you have to have these common types because they both work on the same, with the same definitions, right? Like there's no way to untie them. Right, well, other than defining our own structures for those types. Uh, yeah, but then how, how does that help anyone? Like someone coming from, like if someone wants to implement, uh, to, to use the, I don't know, to write up the Cardano implementations, let's say, or header implementations, then they cannot use our types if there's no like common specification or well-defined spec, which we currently don't have for these hmm. things. How about, um... So they would have to build up their own things and use their own types. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I, I mean, after all, like uh, maybe we don't um, like, um, uh, what, what, what's the argument against defining custom types, you know, right now? And um, what spec are we going to follow? Like you don't need to, any, you don't need to follow any spec. You just uh, like, okay, let's, you do, you, you, you create a schema type on uh, mm -hmm. from what the will information the schema type have, contain it will contain uh, what information the, we have we just have the indie stuff right it, yeah it will contain the important pieces i mean because the baseline wouldn't change like like in the schema in unknown crates create uh, like indie types crates there's a schema uh, like definition and it contains like all of the unknown crate stuff plus some extras mm -hmm. like their sequence number or right. something like that Obviously, sequ sequence number won't be part of uh, uh, Cardano, well, for example. But, but, uh, for sure, so the, but it is part of sure Indy. That's the thing. It is part of Indy. So if you make a common implementation of only the common ground between, between the, you know, the schemas that are out there, you, you are only going to have a half-baked solution even for the Indy ecosystem, which we need. Because like... If, uh, if the sequence number from Indy is used in the Indy ecosystem, which is probably why it's there, then we're not going to have it here, so we cannot use it. No, it it, uh, it probably I I believe it wouldn't be like like you know this this structure. Yeah, that's just an example. Different. That's just an example, though. Like um, because Anon Cred is all you know Anon Cred itself like it's fairly like um, I mean there's to dos but. Um, Anon creds been here uh, around for a couple of years, and they, there wouldn't be like significant changes. Like they are preparing anon creds too already, but it's something else that we don't have to concern it right now. But I, I believe that um, that um, it would be possible to to come up with these structures where you yeah just remove some stuff, you know, from from what the indie types de declare. And then uh, have these types as inputs to the unknown creds traits, for example. But I, I still don't get why you would do that when you can. So you're basically tying everything to a single set of types when this basically just let you have one ecosystem. Like you have the indie stuff, and yeah, the indie like stuff. It, it forces you to like uh, funnel the whatever you resolve on other ledgers into like funnel it into like one like just take out the important why is that yeah but why is that better because it's like consistent like you only have it's, one it's more limited yeah but the consistency from what i understand the consistency is in the ecosystem not necessarily in uh, i mean right now ideally yes it would be 
amazing to have a common schema across multiple ledgers. But right now, each ecosystem really only cares from, from what I can gather. Like they, they are more concerned about having their stuff working right in their own courtyard, right? Rather than- But they still do, uh, they still all do unknown creds. The important pieces are for sure the same. Otherwise, it's not unknown creds what they do. And if they don't do unknown creds, then we don't care. Okay. Uh, yeah, Alfred like, is coming from Indy, so we are kind of like uh, I don't know trendsetters, like uh, you know the okay. um, the other implementation kind of follow you know what what Indy and Alfred's kind of uh, how it set the road. If they, if they have different schema, like significantly different schema, then it's probably not Alfred anymore. So so then why not just use the types from Indy, like everywhere? instead of defining our own because the types which are declaring in the types create um mm -hmm. contain some extra fields like sequence number which you know is not is not uh really related to unknown creds like they put you, the you don't really see the contradiction do you like indy is driving unknown creds but then the and the Indiana Creds implementation is having some extra stuff than base Anon Creds, which is derived from is basically started. Yeah. Uh, so I I'm I'm, I'm uh, just saying this avoids all of these issues. Right now, there's no there's absolutely no problem and it's easy to get them out later. But if we start off in the wrong way and realize we need these, then we're gonna be much harder to add later on. And I, I don't really see the problem. But I mean, I'm, I'm just brainstorming, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm just trying to, to make my case for my opinion. You guys might be right and I might be wrong, but by all means possible. Um, and maybe but, I would like to take a deeper look. I don't know. I've, I've, I'm, uh, I, I have the impression that uh, George is also leaning to like, or maybe also based on the comments uh, he, you, you left in some of the thread issue threads we had. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. I'm trying to make an opinion, but I'm struggling to. Um, yeah, it, it feels like it's possible to define a, a common structure type, um, but there's obviously a lot of ledgers that I'm unaware of. Cardano ledgers and what they require for schemas, um, but uh, I believe that AFJ has pretty much solved this problem by having a common type that you know their Indie SDK implementation and also their um, you know Credex or Indie VDR implementations use. They all use the same types or take in the same types through their interface. Um, okay. But TypeScript doesn't have these cool associated types. So I guess they couldn't leverage this even if they wanted to. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Right. Yeah, okay, I guess I saw uh, the AFJ implementation and thought they did pretty well with defining common types and it seemed to work. Um, but there's a lot of unknowns, I guess. Fair let's uh, let's maybe uh, cut these. Yeah, let's sleep on it a bit. Yeah, <laughs> because no, we no. we don't have much time, and I feel like this could be still like richer discussion. But at the same time, I feel like uh, oh, maybe we we're not really getting a better look and form our opinion because I'm not hundred percent confident in what I'm saying, and you might be right, or maybe I'm right. I don't know. Uh, so let's yeah, let's sleep on it a bit. Yeah, I'm not. 100% confident in what I'm saying either. Um, but th thanks for showing us. That was really cool and a, a cool idea, I think. But, but definitely the split, splitting out, I think that's a good idea. And uh, just typing mm -hmm. it in what, well, whatever type is better than string. And then uh, maybe these associated types, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, discuss it on Discord. Sure. Oh, also, just, just throwing it out there, uh, I, I still think that wallet base wallet should define its own types because 
there's so little types and they're very simple <laughs> but that's my two cents yeah i've heard enough i i don't really know like that seems to be the, the simpler thing um the the more complicated are the ledger and the unknown cred stuff the, the wallet yep. seems indeed to just be yep. something uh, like there seems to be a record maybe but i i don't know if that's something actually worth um having a separate uh, you know separate types or if it can be separate types or what information goes in there so uh, i agree i i don't really know Okay, uh, and we have a last item here in uh, for the progress, and uh, that's uh, the web implementation. So that's uh, that's based on top of the DID resolver PR, just kind of uh, further battle testing the trade design and uh, kind of uh, kind of an example. So we have at least like two different implementations for the for the resolver so this would be two and i i i believe that uh this year we will be definitely adding the edit in the uh method uh which is not yet supported by in the ledger but as i know it, it should be uh with the upcoming um, update of the in the notes so yeah um there's this pr uh, I didn't have yet look at it, but it seems like the the web method is very simple. So, you guys, feel free to have a look, leave a review. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's it. Uh, I don't have much time, so I'll just go through this quickly. Kind of looking into future, uh, the priorities. This is pretty much like covered, soon to be merged. Um, and these two, the 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 new kind of approach testing in type state pattern are highly related. So uh, I know George, you've been working on the on the whole on the holder, right? Yeah, um, it, it'd be good if I could show something if if we have a little bit of time. Um, yeah, I think I mean uh, I think we can stretch. Uh, Bogdan, you're fine with that? Yeah, sure. Cool, cool, cool. All right, then uh, go ahead, George. Ah, cool. Uh, uh, I'll stop sharing. Uh, you can see. Yeah. Cool. Um. So yeah, there was that discussion I started around um, soft failures versus hard failures. Um. And, you know, cases where there can be, uh, you know, uh, an operation that has a soft fail and a hard fail. Um, so right. maybe, for example, um, for example, receiving. I think it was one. Okay. Oh, yeah, receiving an issue credential. Um, so it can fail in, in two ways. It can fail if the thread ID of the message doesn't match, or it could fail if, mm -hmm. you know, some sort of uh, wallet or network fail um, when when storing the credential. Um, and so I guess I was considering thread mismatches to be a hard fail. Um, would you guys? Are they? Why would they be a hard failure? It just means that the message isn't suitable. Is, is what, sir? Uh, I'm saying that it it just means that the message you received isn't suitable for this state machine instance because the thread doesn't match, right? It's not the expected one. Um, but um, yeah, I it guess, seems like that's the kind I, of I, error. I don't think yeah, I don't think this would be something that's unrecoverable. Like, let's assume, okay, the thread ID doesn't match and you send a problem report to the, the other party and they magically fix it and send you the new message that then you can advance the state machine without a problem, right? I, I feel on the other hand, like, uh, like if the, if there's a, hmm, I'm thinking, because, uh, if 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 you receive 
if, if you try to update the state machine with a message which doesn't match thread ID, then it's a likely actually the issue in like uh, the receiver's code, not really the sender, because because if sender sends wrong thread ID, then <laughs> you wouldn't be. I mean, there's not even a way for you as a receiver to, you know, assuming you have multiple conversations going on, you don't even know which, uh, like, uh, state machine you should match it up to. Like, you shouldn't even, you shouldn't have an. Yeah, but that's basically that's basically the job. That's basically the job of having some sort of a thread controller, so yeah. that stores, you know, the information and maybe some ID of the state machines that, um, that are ongoing, right? And so when you, in the endpoints, all right? So when you receive, let's say you receive some sort of message, a proof request on a certain endpoint, and there is some ID there, um, then you know that, okay, that ID matches that thread ID. So it's from that conversations. So you pass that and then the thread ID gets matched and apparently it's a mismatch. Like ultimately, I, I don't see it as a, Part failure at all. Right? I see it as just okay. The message is wrong, regardless of the message. Or rather, better better said, the message is wrong for this state machine instance. Whether the state machine instance is the wrong one, or whether the thread ID was incorrectly placed there, I don't think it really matters. The um, Ultimately, if, if there is, if there would be a match between these two, uh, like a new message comes in using the same state machine instance, and again, magically, the problems would get resolved, then there's no, there's no issue. The, the state machine can continue. A hard failure would be something completely unrecoverable, which essentially from, from the protocol schema, as I see, is being like those diagrams, uh, sorry, I see it being like some some finite finite states where uh, some actual condition and regarding the the protocol moving forward, that that sort of a condition is not met. I, I don't know. Like assuming you want you, you know you you send. Uh, and where a verifier asks you for some proofs that you simply don't have, like there's nothing you can do past that, right? So you're not gonna you're not gonna magically get these proofs or get these credentials um, in between this message and the next one. Uh, and if you do, then they can ask you again. But the, the current state of things. Yeah, I don't have a, so, like. Oh my goodness, I, I I think I don't have necessarily like right now opinion if it, it should be harder solved but i'm just thinking that if i'm just thinking that um um that it should pretty much never happens and like assuming you know um i'm thinking yeah, but I don't think that's i'm thinking on the think assumption how like uh, how these aries agents usually operate like you receive some message and then the first thing you do you're gonna like take a look at that third ID of the message and try to match up a conversation. And if you match something up, then, yeah, then you are matching that thread, you know, you, obviously by definition, you, are, you found something that is matching and you update it and this error doesn't occur. Or in other case, the, the, the thread ID is wrong and you will just end up matching no conversation of those you, you know. Right. So you shouldn't basically ever try. It should kind of never happened that you try to update with the wrong message. And if it happens, it must mean that you received as a, as a, as an agent, you received a message with some thread ID and perhaps you matched wrong conversation, Aries conversation because of the like uh, agent bug or something. But um, yeah, I don't know. It should be hard failure or, or not. Maybe, maybe not. I feel like it's never gonna, it's, it, it won't be happening unless the agent itself is buggy so it maybe doesn't 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 matter that much yeah i, I agree with both of you i think it, i think it probably should be a soft error but it, it shouldn't happen in the first case um 
if the Asian True. controller is doing things right. True. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess I'm in general struggling to think of hard failures, but uh, I'll, I'll keep thinking. Like one obvious hard failure, I guess, is when you decline. But right, is that a failure. <laughs> it's weird to call that well, a failure. Um, I guess I guess it really depends on what. Yeah. The definition of failure might not be uh, suitable for for what we do here, but uh, it's more about like uh, an, I don't know, an a not fav favorable state, terminal mm -hmm. state. I don't know, just yeah, just yeah, some yeah. bad terminal state, I guess. Right? Yeah, unfulfilled terminal state. So if you decline, okay, that's where the whole party ends. Um, yeah. Same way, you know, like the the discussion we had just earlier about okay, some verifier asks you for some credentials you don't have. But there's no way to just uh, get that out of thin air. So then again, that's where the party ends. Uh, but simply because you got a message, a malformed message, uh, doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily mean that your state machine become you know got into some unrecoverable state i guess yep uh no, so one sorry yeah go, go go on oh that's all just i agree <laughs> uh yeah i just uh, noticed here uh this uh holder failed i think perhaps it should be actually like different state uh as uh something like you know rejected or uh, all right open. yeah look like, i mean but isn't that like what's in the diagram? Isn't it? Don't they say it's failed or something? I guess it's about yeah, the protocol, yeah. right? I don't. But uh, we were kind of the saying that, failed uh, if the client. But what we were kind of saying, you know, in in our like uh, implementation guidelines, is that we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't uh, like uh, bundle all kind of negative cases into one single state because then it's hard to distinguish what happened like if you have a failed case for everything whether it's rejected or you received like you know an unexpected message and you have like a hard failure then you don't know like you know if you look at the state machine later you don't know is it because we rejected it or is it because um we failed okay so, so i think yeah. it will make sense like you know to have a different very instead of having like one felt state with different sub variants just have different separate states for different you know negative uh, like uh, negative case scenarios i don't know i I'm, i i don't have a strong opinion on this but i think having one type with multiple variants would be better um yes, because that's regard. what we have now and for example where was it um it's definitely, I think, around uh... ah. So now, right now, it's like even uh, I see. Okay, yeah, because right now, the, as I remember, uh, right now the way it is is like it's bundled really hardcore. So we have like fine, like finished state, and that encapsulates the success and also failure. It yeah. just the fact that the chair is like the yeah. chair. Uh, yeah, so that's bad. But... Yeah, that's bad. But maybe, yeah. uh, maybe having just failed in success, maybe this is reasonable. I still feel like decline offer. It's such a like a, calling it failed is like too much. Like uh, declining offer is not really failure. You just rejected it because you don't like the values. Nothing failed. You didn't like the, the offer. You yeah, received. the protocol failed. The protocol uh, failed. It it it, it so... didn't. It just. It's like a user's decision, like oh, the the it, it was user uh, it was the user's decision to just fail. Yeah, but it, it's a valid thing. I mean, um, ultimately, the protocol is basically the set of steps that the state machine goes through. Right, that's the whole point. And you know, following these paths, maybe there are more, but so following these paths, if you reach to uh, some success end state, then the protocol succeeded. If you don't, and you get to some uh, some failed state or bad state, then you fail. No, I don't know. Like, yeah, I feel like it's, it's confusing quite sometimes. Mm, 
like wouldn't you wouldn't you want to distinguish let's say you're writing like uh like mobile app right and you are doing holder mm -hmm. and you you want yeah but that's to... what i'm saying so you could have yeah. you could have failed could be an enum and it could have variants for the reason it failed so it failed because you declined or it failed because ah, okay. whatever happened but not yeah. as individual types because then you just like there's no need to fall in the other extreme where we have 20 different types for similar things sort of mm. so i, I can I see, see. I, I agree with what you're saying you might want to know so if failed is an enum you can then see the reason based on the variant of why mm. the failure occurred which should be information enough but ultimately they all mean that the protocol ended in a bad way right uh, fair enough i guess like since you wouldn't have any like uh further transitions from there and it's all like exactly exactly you don't, you're not really going to do anything else with it yeah I've, I've seen rfcs use other words like abandoned um mm. be better than yeah. fail. Um, maybe maybe that sounds better yeah I'll, I'll i'll read through the rfcs again and try to pick better yeah. wording and state transitions cool um I was going to show as well, uh, I mentioned uh, sort of ad hocly a crate called mock all, um, which is a good mocking lib. Um, and yeah, I think I, Mira used it as well, and that did resolve. Yeah, right? I did. Cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I tried to incorporate mock all here just to see what it would look like. Um, and yeah, you can sort of see you create these mock all um you define what your mock is and it looks pretty ugly but it, you wrap it in this macro and then it creates mock types um sorry if i'm explaining something you guys already know <laughs> but yeah and after you have your mock type you can say what method call you're expecting uh, like get cred def mm -hmm. uh, and then i'm expecting it to have two parameters and these are the values of the two parameters that I'm expecting um, and then I want it to return this right so that's for ledger and then similar thing for a non-creds I'm expecting this to be called once with all of these values and then return these values uh, and then this lets you like unit test um, some holder call like prepare request um, and, it, and it'll use this mock data and then you can make assertions that the mock data was passed around correctly and handled correctly and it's also great for you know returning errors um, so you can test all the edge cases and get in every corner of the code yeah um, and it kind of also forces you to think in terms of trades right because this this thing is working on the trades you're like mocking the trade implementation it works with it works with structures too so like uh -huh. trades. it's just like the trade annotating trades basically makes it to um, implement like yeah create a type that implements your trade mm. but it works with a lot of stuff yeah i find using cool. structures um, to be very like difficult to work with um because you have to yeah double import seen. things and <laughs> Right. Trade a lot easier um and and luckily like yeah, profile or ledger and non-creds is our interface to the outside world so mocking those really lets you unit test things without leaving the box yeah fair enough so this is uh the taste we are looking at right now this is kind of the yeah it's, it's called happy path right so it's uh how does this work so it is a holder but you are missing the other party so how do you test it or what are you doing in the test actually how how far can you get uh so here i'm preparing a request um, message uh, mm. so this will enter the request prepared state and then mm. since it's in that state i'm able to because you know how we're talking about not sending the message but just having it ready yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, there yeah. would be like a a get message uh, method but for right now I'm just extracting the message from the state uh, and then checking that um, you know the values of that cred request 
message are as expected. So, for mm. example, since a non-creds returns um, dummy cred request uh, when you call create cred request, you'd expect the message to have an attachment uh, with the value of dummy cred request, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, I see. Oh, this must be running very fast, right? There's, there's no I.O. as essentially, well, there's some maybe. Um... Let's see. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> zero. zero, zero. <laughs> well, I guess in practice it will be like uh, maybe a bit, uh, bit longer if we actually create credential definition and stuff. Like make it kind of integration test. The the creation. Yeah, of but those still, it's not even going to compare. Time, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Not to mention but, that right now because of the because of the ledger and stuff, a lot of things have to literally just run sequentially. So yeah. if we have like better mocks in place, we can actually borrow a lot of stuff. So actually like uh, forever in a day. No, well, but yeah, so you still have the problem with the integration test, right? Where where you actually have right. Like, like, but uh, yeah, but we can I'll limit those, like have some have some I know more end to end tests, like proper integration tests where we use the real stuff, but we can still also have sort of integration test testing all of this stuff and multiple protocols, but just use mocks there too. Right. But I'm 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 thinking also uh with the one way we could improve we could actually have integration tests which run in parallel. Uh if we if we make sure that we don't like re if every test is using uh, its own DID you know, from like issuer like okay. standpoint, then there will be no conflict because whatever is written on the ledger or if the ver key of the issue rotates or whatnot, then it will be always isolated to the one particular test. Each test would have its own issuer. And we just have to like improve the, the, the testing test infra a little bit to enable us to enable us doing doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, I, I think it'd be cool as well if um Aries VCX core has some good tests to um test the real implementations of you know credx and non creds, indie SDK and non creds. Um mm. Yeah, we so know the every stuff, right? Because you don't need the entire like protocols, state machines to actually test those those exactly. uh, like cryptographic primitives. And, yeah, so they'd get tested in isolation, uh, and then mm. it makes doing these sort of mock unit tests more acceptable. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The I know full what you integration mean. tests. Right. Uh, stepping through state machines. But yeah, mm. uh, I just thought I'd show this. I don't know if I'll I'll keep it. It might be better to have a separate MR that just introduces these so they can start being used across code as we want. Um, or I could just keep it in this MR or PR. I think it's either um, way it's fine. I think okay. it's fine, yeah. So I mean the whole the whole idea with this thing was that it would be easier to kind of refactor the tests and improve them as we're modifying the state machines because you can have like your contained tests uh, pretty much just uh, revolving more around the changes that either you did or were recently done to these state machines and protocols. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm all for like, making better tests whenever possible. Uh, I, I don't really care if it's a different PR or anything. I just go for it. Cool. That's what awesome. I think. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to share. So now we can go for 100% code coverage, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should be. That sounds like. Uh, okay, guys. I think we kind of reached the end. Uh, we stretched out the time a bit, but it's fine. Um, it was it was pretty useful, good discussion. Um, is there any meeting discussion? So anything else? One thing which comes to my mind um, is just something we mentioned last time internally. Uh, 
that the Aries V6 core is not really a like great name because it doesn't have anything to do with Aries. So we want to rename that component. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Any any ideas for names? Not right now. Yeah, but... ideas are welcome. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, actually, the, the easy I mean, part is bringing it up. The difficult part is coming up with a name. <laughs> yeah. Well, even even uh, we actually we were actually uh, mentioning, suggesting that it might even make sense to split them out as a separate crates, maybe, because uh, wallet has like uh, somebody. Mm, let, let's yeah. from the resolver point of view did the resolver right you only need the ledger read and you don't need all the other dependencies for like wallet implementation and whatnot so maybe it could be actually like i don't know, three different crates for each kind of interface right. the ledger interface wallet interface and then credit interfaces fair enough and that also solves the name problem that would make <laughs> your naming easier and yeah, because it's not like yeah. three different things in one component yeah, cool. Uh, sounds good to me. Uh, cool. Um, one one thing I don't know if it matters too much, but it was mentioned to me today that um, Ursa is the Ursa the crate has reached the yeah, uh, end of life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And VDR tools uses Ursa, I believe, and CredX as well. Um, yeah, so, so they want sure. to, as I know, they want to pull those components, you know, those uh, URSA components which are being used, they want to pull them into the the consuming crate. So I assume that the NN crates RS or CredX would probably you know, contain some sort of submodule with the um, stuff which was previously in URSA, essentially. Right. So I understand. And, and VDR tools, I guess, probably doesn't have much hope since it's a fork of a fork of a fork and yeah i guess there's something but they need to i mean that stuff has to keep working right? they cannot just delete the entire ursa or something of course yeah yeah but i don't think they're just gonna yeah they're probably just gonna archive the repo or something right yeah and because even integrating that is gonna take a lot of time hmm. I, I, I mean maybe not, not that much but still um hmm. yeah i don't know yeah it's an issue for the entire community and uh, i mean all the aries implementations are are using that right so yeah there's there's, there's lots of um, motivated people to keep the things working yeah for sure <laughs> Okay, guys, anything else on your mind? Not for anything from my side. All right. My, my battery is slowly dying. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's about time to wrap it up. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you All for, right. uh, for uh, connecting. Um, pleasure to talk to you. Have a good uh, rest of the week. Have a nice weekend. You too. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Right. Yeah.